Guys, today's chicken processing video is brought to you in part by Murray McMurray Hatchery. That's where we got all of our birds from this year. That's where we've got them from for the last two years and they've been absolutely awesome. Hope you enjoy the video. Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another beautiful day here on the Stony Ridge. Today is chicken processing day. So if you watch the channel, if you keep up with the channel, we do this about twice a year and we're gonna show you guys how we do our chicken processing. It's a pretty cool, pretty simple setup. We'll show you our setup and we'll also talk about how you can do this at home on the cheap. It's our outdoor meat processing mobile setup and we actually rent this out. It's paid for itself just in rental fees. It's pretty awesome, guys. So come along as we show you how we do our outdoor chicken processing here on the Stony Ridge Farm, all right? So I've got my helpers on standby in the Kubota in the shade. It is going to be a hot one today. I think highs in the upper 90s. Ugh, it's going to be rough. So these are our hugging cones. On the back of the Kubota are our chickens, okay? The chickens do not face the processing area. For those of you who are concerned and think that chickens have the cognition to understand that other chickens around them are being processed, I will tell you this. If you take a chicken and you gut that chicken and you throw the guts over into the chicken coop, the other chickens will eat it. They have no idea of what's going on. So if you think that they do, then you're wrong, okay? <laughs> they will eat anything. If another chicken were to die in the mobile coop, and I'll show you the mobile coop in a second, the other chickens will rapidly consume that chicken. So literally they have no clue. For those of you who have left a lot of comments on, I can't believe you're letting the other chickens watch those chickens die. That's the problem. It's not a problem. So this is our hugging cone setup right here or our killing cone setup. These are cones that we drop the birds down in. We lacerate the jugular vein and we let the chickens bleed out right there. They bleed into these buckets. I run about that much water in the bottom of those buckets so that the blood doesn't stick to the bucket. You need to keep this area wet while you're working. This is a turkey cooker. We use that for a scalder. Over here is a plucker and we set up this tent underneath here. This is the processing area. So it goes from dirty to clean to cleaner to really clean and then we go into our three bay sink over here. All this stuff you can purchase, this is old restaurant equipment that I purchased on the fly on the side. So this is a old restaurant table and we've got some nylon boards right here. This three bay sink will go cool, colder and coldest. We'll have blocks of ice and or ice cubes in these sinks. Once we get done, the chickens will go from around 100 degrees to around 45 to 50 degrees and we'll put them in shrink bags and we'll put them in the freezer, okay? Guys, be sure, be sure, be sure. If you're putting this quantity of meat in your freezer, you need to understand it's gonna thaw everything out in the freezer. So be sure you use a separate freezer for this or you only do five or six birds at a time. This area is another clean area and this is where we'll be bagging them up and we'll be putting them in the freezer. Now the plucker is really cool. This thing right here, you have to spray water in as they're plucking. So you scald at about 145 to 155 degrees. Then you run the plucker. The plucker pulls all the feathers off. Then we go over here, we gut, and we go ahead and put them in the ice. That's it, that's the processing setup. If you don't have a plucker, you can always find a used turkey cooker and hand pluck them. It's not that bad to hand pluck them. You just grab the feathers and just pull them out. Well, we're gonna go ahead and grab our chickens up out of our mobile coop. Let's walk over here and I'll show you the mobile coop setup. We move our chickens on pasture every single day for about the last seven weeks of their lives. So these are our meat birds and this is our mobile coop. It's a PVC mobile coop. There'll be a link at the end of this video to the build of the PVC mobile coop. You can see that the birds have been moving right here in our yard throughout the last five or six weeks of their lives. We process them once they get to about seven and a half to eight pounds, okay? That'll dress a bird out at about six and a half to seven pounds, maybe five and a half pounds. They have moved all over the yard and you can see the dark green spots versus the light green spots. We're getting free fertilizer out of these chickens butts. Awesome. This is a Cornish cross meat bird. These are the meat birds that we've been raising. They are about eight to nine weeks old. That bird will probably dress out at about six and a half to seven pounds. It's a little bit on the small side. 
What we do here on the farm is we provide one great life with one bad moment. And I think we should all be so blessed to have a wonderful life out here in the yard, eating bugs, having forage, living like a chicken's supposed to live with one bad moment. And that feeds our family, that one bad moment. So we don't want our birds stressed and we don't want our birds wore out and we don't want our birds to be unhappy. We want happy birds, which makes happy people, which makes healthy food. That's what it's all about. So the bird's down here, his head's hanging through the hugging cone, and we're gonna take our dexter paring knife and we're gonna dispatch the bird. We're gonna firmly hold our knife and we're gonna draw that knife across the bird's neck. If you don't know how to kill a chicken, that's how you kill a chicken. Pull down and slice, okay? That's what we're gonna do. We're not gonna show this on camera, but that's how you do it. Just pull the head down, and give a slice. It's normal for the bird to kick a little bit and or jump around just a little bit when you slice the head. We've all heard the old wives tale, grandma cut the head off the chicken and it took off running through the barnyard. Well, what we're doing here is saving the chicken from being bruised and being damaged. And we're also saving the chicken by quickly dispatching it. It just never knows what hit it. It's a quick way to go. It's a super awesome way to go. Again, we should all be so blessed. Now the chicken goes from here to the scalder. So our temperature is about 145 degrees and our scalder, we're ready to go ahead and scald our first chicken. It takes about 45 seconds and typically I'll scald two chickens at one time and pluck two chickens at one time. This is a chicken ready to be scalded. We'll drop one chicken in and two chickens in. Again, our water temperature is right at about 145 to 155. If we leave them in too long, we're gonna scald the birds, okay? So we don't wanna scald the skin on the bird, we don't want to cook it in other words. We just want the bird to be in the scalder long enough for the meat to come off the feather. So right here for the skin to come off, just like that, okay? About three more seconds, we're ready to rock and roll. Now that we've scalded long enough, we'll go ahead, pick up the chicken. I like to wear rubber gloves because these chickens are hot. Okay, wanna run some cold water down in here. We'll reach down, we'll turn the scalder off and out comes our chickens. These chickens are 99% plucked. Some of them you gotta do a little bit by hand and especially on these pin feathers right here and the feathers right on the wing tips like to kinda uh, be a pain in the butt. But that's it, that's the chicken scalded, ready to go. And it goes over here to dad on the gutting table. Guys, today's helpers are Woody, good buddy of mine's been helping me since what? Since we were up here weed eating? Yeah, what, <laughs> 2016 or something? Yeah, Maybe since the farm first that. started. Yep, and my dad's over here, Papa Stony Ridge. He don't say much, but when he does, it's funny. <laughs> Let's show you guys how to go ahead and process and gut the chicken and get it ready for the freezer bag. So here we have about, uh, I must say about a six and a half, seven pound bird. Here's what we do. So we go ahead and we remove the wing tips. The wing tips are super easy to remove. We'll find that knuckle right there and we'll just cut down and cut up. There's a wing tip and here's a wing tip, okay? Just like so. You can use these and we will use these later for broths. So we're gonna set them to the side here. We're also gonna remove the feet. So we're gonna bend the leg back. We're gonna hit that tendon right there. We're gonna release it, cut up, and off comes one foot. Same thing on the other side. Down, up. You wanna make sure you've got a good sharp knife. I like the Dexter paring knives and or this one right here, I believe is a Chico Chicago cutlery. It does a pretty good job. Now we're going to pinch right here, okay? We're going to pinch and we're going to cut outward. We don't want to cut inward because if we cut inward, we run a risk of piercing the intestine, okay? You can see this bird has a little bit of manure, so I'm going to give him a little squeeze and reduce that manure load a little bit. I gave him a little squeeze. We're also going to give him a little bit of a rinse. We want to reduce any manure load that we might have. These are the wing tips and the legs, and they will go into a pot for making stock, chicken stock. Dad takes those home with him. Part of dad's treat for helping out. So we're in here, we wanna go ahead and take a finger or two fingers and we wanna push, okay? So we wanna push in and tear our way into the intestinal cavity of this bird right here. We wanna tear it open, okay? Because tearing, you never run a risk of cutting the meat, okay? You never run a risk of cutting an intestine also. Okay, we're inside right here. Now I almost forgot to show you something. We're gonna go ahead and remove the craw area. So the craw is right here. We're gonna pinch right here. We're gonna cut away from ourselves. Craw is the first chamber of the chicken's stomach. And it's basically the esophagus of the chicken. This chicken has a very, very small 
uh, craw area right here, but we'll go ahead and pull at it a little bit. What you want to do is you want your birds to fast. In other words, for the last 24 hours of life, you want them to fast. You want to take two fingers like this and go in like quotation marks inside and you want to rake out the lungs from the inner cavity of the chicken and we want to pull out the intestine. That's the esophagus and that's the crawl that we were trying to get. Everything is rolled out right now. There's no manure, no problem. We're going to take our knife. We're going to go right around the rectal area of this bird and we're going to leave this part on the bird, that part right there. So we're going to leave that, but we're going to cut out all the intestinal. You see no manure load whatsoever. This bird is absolutely ready to go. You can also see a little bit of the trachea right there. We can tear that out. Now we have innards to work with here too. So we're going to take this bird, rinse it off, and we'll go over into our three base sink and I'll show you that set up here in just a second once I rinse the bird off. This is our intestinal pile. There's only a few things we want from this pile of intestines. One is the gizzard. The gizzard's absolutely delicious. It's a muscle. It's the chewing muscle. Chickens don't have teeth. They have a gizzard. The gizzard is what the chicken uses for chewing. That is the gizzard. It'll go over here and eventually we'll split the gizzard all the way around the outside edge and there's a membrane inside there we'll pull out and that is a delicious part of the chicken. Next is the liver. We want to be really careful. We also get the heart out too. This is the heart and the heart should just pull right out. We'll put that in a separate container over here. So the liver has the gallbladder attached to it and you want to be very very careful to not bust the gallbladder. The gallbladder is this green thing attached to the liver. That's the liver, it should just pull right off, okay? So just pull, just use pulling motions, okay? We'll put the livers and the hearts together, and that's the gallbladder. If you bust that, green stuff gets everywhere. You better get your rinser ready to rinse. Next bird, we're gonna show you real quick. Repetition is the mother of the memory. So we're gonna go take the wing, we're gonna cut, let's move that guy. We're gonna cut the top, we're gonna reach underneath, we're gonna cut the bottom. This is how to <laughs> gut a chicken in 30 seconds or less. Again, next wing, we're gonna cut at the top of that knuckle, and we're gonna cut at the bottom. Off comes the wings, those go for chicken stock. Again, bend the leg, just like so. Cut right there, come back underneath, cut it off, remove it. Those will go for chicken stock also. Okay, cut that guy there. Now we're ready to rock and roll, we're ready to go into the intestines. We're gonna pinch up, just like we did before. Cut outward, take our two fingers, press in. Got a little bit of a manure load right there. We wanna go ahead and rinse that manure off our hands and off of the bird. Manure is the enemy here. That's why we want our chickens to fast for a couple days prior to, at least 24 hours prior to processing. Again, we're gonna go in with the craw. We're gonna go ahead and open this. Okay, and the craw is right in there. That's the first chamber of the chicken's stomach. Again, we're gonna break that loose, okay? And we can cut the craw out if we want to. This one's a little bigger than the last bird. We'll throw that in our yuck pile over here, a yuck bucket. Reach in here, taking two fingers like quotation marks and raking in the inside of the rib cage, pulling out the lungs and the intestines, okay? Everything comes out, should come out in one foul swoop, one foul, foul, no pun intended. Out it comes. We're gonna cut again around the rectal area. Nice and gentle, go right around the rectum. That's it. That's our chicken, ready to go. Ready to go in the sink over here. We're gonna rinse it off and put it in the sink. Now we're to our innards. Again, our heart, we wanna take our heart, we'll put it in with the hearts and the livers. The liver's right here. Again, you don't have to do any cutting, so be careful, don't bust that gallbladder right there, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and give her a little tug. Pull that liver off, put that liver in the liver bin. We have bins of ice water over here that we're putting everything in. We gotta move pretty fast because it's hot today. Okay, there's our gizzard. And that's just how simple it is. It's a 30 second process of gutting a chicken. So this whole process doesn't take very long. These 35 chickens are probably gonna take us somewhere in the neighborhood of two hours to process. That is a lot of chicken in a very short period of time. Let's take you over and we'll show you the three base sink. Here's the three base sink set up and the lighting's a little bit bad right here, but we've got the chickens come out from processing, go in the cold water, colder water and ice water. So we get cold, colder and coldest. And once it gets to the coldest point, we'll go ahead and we'll bag up and we'll show you guys how we bag them up in these shrink bags. Pretty cool. Well, what do you boys think? We about ready to wrap this up? Yeah. Good, to go. <laughs> Good stuff. This is what I was raised doing, guys, but we never plucked chickens. Growing up, we never plucked them. We always skinned them, didn't we? Mostly. Yeah. 
I got a video out on how to skin chickens. I'll post a link right up here at the end of the video, okay guys? So you can go, if you don't wanna pluck them, skinning them is another route. It's really easy and it's another healthy way of making your chicken, cool? We'll show you how we bag them up. So the next step in this process is one man drops a chicken in these shrink wrap bags. We get the chicken down in there. We dip them in hot water right here. This water is about 210 degrees. The bag shrinks down around the chicken. We'll take this, twist it up, and then we'll hit it with a hog ring. This is a hog ring tool and that's a hog ring in there. We'll just take this clip and instead of using zip ties like a lot of people do, we'll use a hog ring and we'll clip that on there and then the chicken will be good. It'll be good for the freezer for at least a year, maybe even a year and a half. Cool? Okay, chicken goes in the bag just like so. I'm gonna get it and the reason I have these gloves on is not because it's gross, it's to keep my hands from getting burnt. None of this is gross, guys. None of this is nasty. None of this is any worry about salmonella or anything like that. We keep the birds cool. So they've gone through the three bay sink. Cool, cooler, and coldest. There's still ice in that one right here. This bird is about 45 degrees. We're gonna dip them over in the hot water and this bag is gonna shrink up around them. I'll post links to the shrink bags and to the hog ring and hog ring flyers for you down there in the video description. All these tools will be down there in the video description for you. We've done this before. We dip this down in, down in the hot water. We take a wooden spoon, hold it down about, I don't know, 10 seconds, something like that. Don't hold it too long. Now it's shrunk around the chicken. We'll pull it tight, it's almost too, <laughs> too shrunken. These are big chickens. And then Mr. Woody will come over here with the hog ring, just like so. And then your chicken is freezer ready. Awesome. Now we're setting our chickens over <laughs> in the loader bucket, believe it or not. This is the loader system from Wild Hair Manufacturing on the four wheeler. Super handy, super handy. I can pull right in the garage, right up to the freezer and set them right in the freezer. Good deal. I want to get that bird down in the corner if you possibly can, right down in the corner of that bag. And you want to get the bigger bags. You want to get the extra large bags if you possibly can. These Cornish cross birds get big. Down for the dip. Yeah, five, ten seconds, something like that. Up we go. Hog ring pliers. There you go. Hog ring pliers work much, much better than zip ties. Zip ties typically come in the kit and you're gonna take these birds, you're gonna put them right in the freezer, okay? It's gonna take them at least two days to freeze 35 birds. So don't worry about that. A lot of people hang these birds and want them to age or whatever. You don't have to worry about that. You can take them out of the freezer, leave them in your fridge for a couple days and they'll age and get tender, okay? I've never had a tough bird the way we're doing this. We got a bunch of birds to do, so we're gonna get rolling. You're gonna see the process over and over and over again. It's a repetitive process and it's pretty easy. Like I said, guys, we learn something new every time we do this. We do this with the legs down. So put it with the legs down and the tail, where the tail feathers would be, that's where the tail of your bag needs to be. Works great. That's how we process chickens here on the Stony Ridge Farm. Pretty soon you'll be able to buy these chickens um, once we get all of our mandated government information done. But that's how these chickens are raised. That's how we do the chickens here on the farm. I'm not sure if the government's going to let us sell chickens that we process outside, but we'll find out, guys. Thanks a lot for joining us here on the Stony Ridge Farm today. I hope you learned a little bit. We all had a little bit of fun, a little bit of fellowship. Please pound that like button, jump in, subscribe to the channel. Love to have you back. All right? Woo! Woo! Come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life.
pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Red. Bill, well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your chicks. We're twisting bags, pure and sweet. Cut. That's a wrap.